Our study looked at uh, the evolution of African climate uh, over the last 15,000 years. What we discovered in this uh, sediment core was that this transition from Africa being completely vegetated uh, roughly between five and 10,000 years ago to the desert that it is now, that transition happened at almost at exactly 5,000 years ago. One of the purposes of this paper was to explore this particular area that we were looking at and bring together evidence from other lake records nearby and, and at least for the region that we're considering, and this is for the, for the Horn of Africa, so it's Somalia, Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, um, and uh, a little bit further west as well. Um, for that whole region, we get a consistent story that the end of the African humid period of 5,000 years ago occurred really quickly within centuries. We know what causes the the, the overall transition from Africa becoming or having been much wetter in the past to the very dry North Africa that exists today. That's due to a change in the Earth's orbit around the sun and that changes the amount of sunlight that you get during a given season, let's say summer. If we look through geologic time and you sort of go back through the eons, there's just tons of evidence that life responds to climate. Um, there's no shortage of evidence that um, Organisms large and small, from bacteria to mammoths, um, respond to climate. In many cases in the geologic past, there are examples of uh, great extinctions or great speciation events linked to changes in climate. Um, the most recent being at the end of the Ice Age, the so-called the, the megafauna extinction, when all the um, woolly mammoths and the sort of large um, mammals disappeared from North America. So. The sediment core that we collected, what was interesting about this particular study is that this was the, the penultimate leg of a cruise that circumnavigated Africa. So it started near Morocco, went toward South Africa, and then marched its way back up East Africa, the, the coast of East Africa. And fortunately, we were on a Dutch flag ship because actually the, the timing of our cruise was uh, two months before 9-11. At that time, the pirates hadn't gotten so bold as we now know them to be. Um, they weren't coming out hundreds of kilometers away from the, uh, from the coastline. As we were sailing along the Somali coast, which you know, is known by everyone as being a really terrible place, um, we had to uh, shut off all the lights, all the navigation lights, which is normally totally illegal. Uh, but we shut off all navigation lights and all interior lights, and so all we had were those those sort of red photographer's lights, if you know those, those very dim red lights. Uh, we had that, and we had uh, total radio silence, which uh, the captain wasn't particularly happy about, but that was certainly the safe thing to do. And then we had a whole protocol for what to do if we were boarded, because um, we had women on board, and so one of the things that the captain was really concerned about was you know, what might happen, and so we had this whole plan to lock certain people up in the chain locker, and you know, it was really, it was really, pretty nerve-wracking for, for a lot of people. The side story to this paper is that we, got a, we, we developed this record from a place where it's just impossible to do science now. And that's, I think, one of the side stories to this whole geopolitical conflict period is that there's a whole section of the world that we can't do science in. And it's not because the science isn't fascinating and interesting. It's just because it's closed. And what makes it doubly sad is that the people of these countries that are in these areas, like in Yemen and, and, uh, and in Ethiopia, they're so eager to be part of the science. They're, they're really well trained, they're really smart, they're, they're, they know what the science problems are, they just can't do anything because um, the place is off limits, it's in such contested areas. Even work I used to do in Kenya on land now, there are areas that I can't go to anymore. We were shot at last time we were there. So. You have to, I mean, it's just, it's, it's like the Wild West out there.